All right, welcome back to Rogue Tech, and welcome back to your first playthrough. So, once again, last uh, last episode, we made the critical error of greeting to try to get the cockpit voice to not be lost by punching out Sarge. In doing so, we now have Sarge injured for 12 days. We lost the cockpit voice anyway because Sarge panic ejected. And because we were slowly jumping and bracing and falling down due to our piloting check with one leg missing, we took so long to get out that the kill team dropped and killed Braver, killed Horik, possibly permanently destroyed the Copperhead and Locust. And again, the assassin punched out anyway. So, when we go to the salvage screen, you'll see all the salvage that we have from all of the different things. The Mantis is actually fully intact if we wanted to take it. That's interesting. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> but um, looking through the salvage screen, you can see there's nothing super interesting, nothing extremely valuable. Uh, worth noting, the fire control energy accuracy did come default in the Wolfhound. So its quirk is plus one energy weapon accuracy. Its fire control energy accuracy gives it another plus two. Wolfhounds, anytime you see them, are always extremely accurate with energy weapons. That's just kind of how they are. Um, the sensor recon <coughs> is also interesting. But I'm going to try to not spend too much time talking about the salvage screen here. There will be plenty more salvage screens to come. Because the specific things I want to draw attention to, we'll get to in just a moment. Um, but there are three parts of a Kabuto. And there are four parts of the Wolfhound. So the Wolfhound we can salvage and put together just like the ones we've had. Uh, there are four parts of the Ripper and Mantis. So we can actually build both VTOLs if we wanted to. And especially if you wanted to continue playing after losing <laughs> after losing a mech and potentially one of the vehicles that you have. More vehicles does mean more fodder drops that you can just throw down mission after mission after mission. Um, and either not have to worry about repairing them, which is the benefit of vehicles, or, you know, if you lose them, it's not the end of the world. So... We are going to, um, for the sake for the sake of this particular period of instruction, uh, also light PVC. Like I said, thirty damage, max range seven twenty, so very impressive range. Evasion ignore and one ECM jamming when you hit somebody with it. So very very solid weapon system for three tons. Other than that, I'm just gonna draw some attention to. Uh, I already drew attention to the tag. I already drew attention to Beagle Probe and Garden ECM in previous videos. I already drew attention to the Sensor Recon in previous videos. So, there's not really anything else to talk about. Uh, I mean, Com Suite Plus is just, you know, Com Suite Plus, plus 6% re resolve generation, plus 1 tactics. I think I already drew attention to that in a previous episode. Yeah, anyway. So, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything specific that needs to be addressed here. So, um, yeah, like I said, if, if I were to continue on with this playthrough, which, spoilers, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reload the save. Uh, <laughs> and I'll discuss why and how and the nuance of that as well. So, we've got the Ripper, mmm... Double pulse laser quad missile, eh. You saw the Ripper had, like, very, very little armor. The Mantis was okay. Uh, I mean, 20, or 220 armor is definitely better than the 135 that the Ripper has. And it is a VTOL, so that could be a viable addition to replace the vehicle that we might have lost. But I think going with the Wolfhound to potentially replace the... 20 ton mech that we probably lost is all right i mean it's a coin flip whether we lost or not but we'll we'll get to that in a moment and then the other two parts again i think trying to just replace oh three parts the other three parts i think just trying to replace 
the vehicle that was lost is also a good play. So you can see at the top of at the top of the um, the salvage that we got, you see the two pieces of the Copperhead Mark II. So the Copperhead Mark II was destroyed and could not be recovered. We got the full Mantis. We got three parts of the Ripper, two parts of the CX, four parts of the Wolfhound. There are no parts of the Hornet, which means we did not lose the mech. If we had lost the mech chassis from the Hornet, there would have been at least one part of the Hornet left that we got. Um, just small lasers, da, 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 da. none of this really matters. Because, again, we're not actually persisting after this. Alright, and then here we are in the post... Uh, the the post mission pop-ups where it normally would just say how much you know C bills and how much time to repair Copperhead has been destroyed and cannot be recovered three of our mechs were damaged and it'll cost 386,000 C bills and 25 days for the repairs Braver has died Horik has died and then we get to the point where we can actually look at stuff. So, first thing I want to draw attention to is those repairs. 18 days on the Assassin, four days on the Locust, and five days on the Hornet. Yes, the Hornet got wrecked, lost center torso, and is gonna take less time to repair, or about the same amount of time to repair as the Locust that just got, you know, damaged. So, looking at that, Hornet. The Hornet. Uh, not the Phoenix Hawk. The Hornet. If we look at exactly what happened to it. It lost side torso, which had three heat sinks, and it lost arm, which had two of its energy weapons. In addition to that, everything else got damaged, and we would have to put all the armor back. So, again, five days, even though we basically lost the entire mech. Like, all that's left is the engine core, three heat sinks, and a small laser. But it's still only going to take five days to do the repairs, to replace all the armor that was on it, and then probably another two or three days to put all this stuff back in. Meanwhile, the Locust, which again was four days... Oh, the Locust got cored too. Oh, okay, so the Hornet didn't get destroyed. The Hornet didn't get destroyed, but actually takes a day longer than the Locust, because all the Locust lost was Center Torso. But, that means we lost the Engine Core. This is, this is what I was trying to talk about. So, since we lost the Engine Core, we now, first of all, need an Engine Core to replace it, which we do not have the same 170, which means we either drop in a heavier Engine Core, and then figure out how to fit the you know extra tonnage for the engine core or we drop a lighter engine core and lose the mobility that made the locust actually viable or at least actually you know not a death trap and then we also lost both medium lasers so we have the medium lasers to replace and we need to put the armor back and all of that but yeah the 20 tonners Four days and five days, respectively. Like, that's a lot of time to rebuild a 20-tonner. And then we have the Assassin. And you can see, the Assassin got completely wrecked. No armor left on the center torso front. 38 structure left. 37 structure on the side torso. No armor. Like, this thing would take so long to rebuild. It has the Duralast Quicksail still. It still has three jump jets in its engine core. And that is it. So, what you would do, most likely, if you were going to continue this playthrough at this point, again, because the Assassin doesn't have the best hard points and wasn't uh, super effective, you could scrap. So you see 93,000, 93,000 sea bills, and it's gone. Um... And 93, or nine, ugh, the 93,000 does not include the components. Because if we go and we look at the internals, the engine cores. Uh, wait, did it lose its engine core? 
Hold on a second. So we have three machine guns. When we scrap the locust, we should have five machine guns. So if we scrap the locust for 37,000 sea bills, we should have... Yeah, okay. So I guess I just didn't pay close enough attention to what core we were running in the assassin. Uh, but it should, whenever you, scrap a, whenever you scrap a mech, it should put everything that's in the mech into your inventory. Now, it might have bugged, and we might have lost the engine core that was in... Because I, I, I thought we had heavier than a 210 core in the Assassin. I thought it was running like 300 or something. You know what? Future me will probably make reference here of me being stupid, but... <laughs> Yeah, so by scrapping a mech, you have all of the components in that mech put into your storage. So, yeah, scrapping those three. And then going into storage, we could build the Wolfhound. And the Wolfhound is completely busted. Yep, completely busted. And again, this is with extravagance, so we have an extra 25% mech tech compared to what we would normally have. So you can see, yet again, building mechs early game is expensive, is time consuming, and you're very unlikely to have very much equipment left in them. So, yeah, unless you're doing the mission successfully without taking very much damage, uh, building mechs is an investment, a serious, serious investment. Now then, the last thing I'm going to draw attention to before the next uh, major point is if you go to the memorial, there it is, uh, yeah, memorial, you'll hear the incredibly loud somber music playing, and you will see each person that has died in, in service to your company. Total company casualties, very self-explanatory. And yeah, hit by an enemy, ROC LBX-20. So an LBX-20 from the kill team absolutely wrecked Horik. You'll see how many deployments they dropped on, how many injuries they took, how many mech kills they got, and how many other kills they got, as well as how many times they ejected. Now, it's worth noting, this was the first time Horik was injured. So injuries taken includes every injury that killed them. So if they have four health like Horik did, then the four injuries taken just means he took all of his injuries all at once. First name, last name, very self-explanatory. Time served tells you when they joined and when they died. And the specialization is literally just a way of telling what uh, perks they had unlocked. And then you'll see here, again, three injuries taken because he only had three health. More kills, whatever. So... This is the memorial wall. All right. Now the last thing to talk about. Reloading saves. If this is your first playthrough, there is no shame in getting completely obliterated in a mission and just reloading the save. That there, there should be no shame in it at all. Now, it is worth noting that in the past, reloading saves has been weird if you were playing the online map and you actually were vetted and had impact on the online progress. But I think uh, in recent in recent time, they have changed things so that like, if you get completely obliterated, you can just like not play for the day and like reload a save and then like wait to do stuff. And then the new reload will actually be counted as your current, it's, it's complex, but if you're either not playing on the online map, like if you're playing um, with the the offline mode, the offline uh, gameplay like I am, or if you're just not vetted and not in any way influencing the online map progress or whatever, then there's no reason to not reload other than just, you know, pride or <laughs> if you're playing Iron Man or, or if you're, you know, doing a compelling series like I do with the challenge run. But uh, if you're just playing for the funsies, like, there is no shame in reloading. It, it's completely viable and fine, especially, especially as you're learning. 
because mistakes will be made and some of those mistakes like the you know the one i presented yesterday as like oh i don't want to punch out to lose this one insignificant co cockpit piece and then you end up losing half your lance because of it like there is no shame in admitting yeah i messed up bad i should totally reload the save to try it again and not mess up so bad but there is one thing to note whenever you are reloading a save one very very important point to note always quit out of rogue tech completely quit to desktop relaunch and then reload the previous save It gets wonky if you try to load from inside Rogue Tech. So. Actually, I think... Mm, anyway, well, b before, I, before I do the reload thing, um, and it's also worth noting that Sarge, again, was not injured when we could have ejected with Sarge. Like, we could have ejected as soon as we were, you know, heading to the evac point, and Sarge would not have been injured and would have just been fatigued and would have been ready to drop on another mission very shortly. But because we greeted for the cockpit voice, we lost it anyway, and Sarge is injured now, and we lost all the other stuff. Like, don't greed for components. I don't care if you're, like, having to punch out clan tech cockpits with enhanced imaging and all sorts. No. If it means the difference between the kill squad dropping and not, just eject. There's no shame in ejecting either. Uh, <laughs> and just always keep in mind while you're weighing those options that you do have whatever your recovery chance is in the, rogue, uh, in the, the, in the settings for rogue tech always add plus 50% and that's your chance of keeping the mech or vehicle if you eject. Well, no, no, that's right. Vehicles vehicles don't guarantee to keep them if you eject. It's the, it's just mechs that you have the plus 50%. So if you have the default 50-50 chance of keeping a destroyed mech's chassis, then ejecting will always be a 100% chance to keep the chassis. And obviously, if you don't eject and the kill squad drops and destroys the rest of the mech, you also lose the other components that were in that mech. So, um, is there anything else I need to talk about, about losing the mission? Because I already showed scrapping the mechs. I already talked about the equipment from the mech being put into your inventory instead of whatever. So, there's that. Um... I showed the insane repair time and cost. Went over extensively the don't greed for some cockpit components, just eject if it means the kill squad won't drop. Um, all right. So, in the reload, uh, again, you can you can go to, you know, escape out like you would quit the desktop anyway. Um, do not go main menu and reload. That can be janky. And I'm gonna show just going straight load game. Uh, if you go post mission, this will be after you've already lost. It doesn't re-roll anything, right? So if you lost the, you know, the copperhead, no matter how many times you reload the post mission autosave, you will still have lost the copperhead. That does not change. Uh, Pre-mission, if you load the pre-mission save, it autosaves after you click the deploy button. So it should, most of the time, uh, I have had it be weird sometimes, but most of the time, it will reload with the units you had picked out to drop and the mech warriors and pilots you had assigned to each vehicle or mech already in place. So it's nice if you like spent a while trying to figure out who to put where or whatever that it automatically keeps that. Or you can drop on your last manual save if you want to maybe change the way that you did things leading up to the mission. But just for the sake of this period of instruction, I'm going to try to load the pre-mission save. And we'll see if it works. We'll, we'll see if it janks out at all. Okay, so we loaded into the autosave pre-mission. 
Uh, the tasks look fine. The barracks look fine. Did they actually fix? Did they fix it? Yeah, everything's right in the mech bay. Oh, no kidding. All right, I stand corrected. It apparently is now safe to load a save without quitting out completely. Uh, although it is worth noting that when you do quit Rogue Tech to desktop and then relaunch it, it does dump your RAM and, and free up your cache so that, especially if you're having trouble with like uh, lag, or not lag, but like uh, delayed AI and stuff, uh, long load times and things, if you quit to desktop and then load in again from a fresh launch, that clears out all the junk that was being held in memory. So it can, especially if you're running like 32 or less gigs of RAM, it can be very beneficial to save and quit and reload or like relaunch after every single mission just to save time like loading and waiting for like AI moves and stuff because launching the game takes a minute with uh with rogue tech modding it all to to you know crazy lengths but it especially if you have like 16 gigs of ram it can very much save you a ton of time with the ai just like bugging out or the the uh you know load time between missions and between mission and post game and it can also very much reduce the chances of crashing so launching, you know, launching the game again every, you know, mission or every two missions, figure out whatever works best for you. But definitely, if you're going to play for many hours in a single day, quit out, relaunch, maybe take a stretch while it's launching, whatever. Just, uh, it, it'll reduce the chances of crashes, it'll reduce the amount that's already being held in memory when you launch a new mission, and it can very much help performance. And now that I've determined and realized that they apparently fixed the load game from inside the game, let's try main menu from inside the game. There we go. Okay. <laughs> You'll notice quitting to main menu, it does not say rogue tech anymore. If you click career and you click load, you could load in, which we're gonna try, but who knows what's gonna happen. Really? Really? Interesting. They fixed it. What mad lads, they actually fixed it. Okay, I stand corrected. The modders, once again, like, I give them so much props, like, everything, everything that's buggy and busted, like, they get on it. Well done. Um, I have no idea when they fixed any of this, because like I said, I, I don't reload for the challenge run, so like, I haven't tried to reload a past save in years <laughs> it, it literally has been a couple years uh i think since the last time i tried to reload uh save so no okay i stand corrected it is completely safe to just escape load game and go to main menu and load game again uh still stands it does still stand that the only way to dump the ram and the cache and everything is to quit the desktop so if you are having performance issues, slowdowns, uh, long AI, you know, think times, and you're on the third plus mission, definitely uh, try saving out, quitting to desktop, and you know, relaunching. Just, just because that's how you know that's how computers work. <laughs> there is no way because I, as long as a program is still tying up the RAM and cache and everything that is allotted to it it will continue just adding to the pile until your computer eventually, you know, crashes out. Uh, unless it's very, very efficient and well-designed, which not even AAA games often are. So, 
it's always a good idea, especially if you're playing with, you know, a low RAM count, you know, or low RAM uh, volume, things like that. It's always worth time to quit out and relaunch whenever you have any kind of slowdown at all, just to give your computer a chance to kind of like reset the memory usage and everything. But yeah, um, so they fixed it. I, I have no idea when. I have no idea how long it's been safe to do so. I've, I've been, I've just believed that they were like, no, nah, that's not an important issue to fix. But no, apparently, despite the fact that some of the loading tooltips make fun of people for reloading, apparently they did make it safer to reload without crashing or breaking anything. Cause like I'm seeing everything is correct as it should be. Even though you saw whenever we loaded back to the main menu, it said Battletech. And the reason I knew that could happen is because also if you launch Rogue Tech and then it minimizes for whatever reason and you don't realize that it minimizes and you thought you failed to launch and so you launch again, the second launch will say Battle Tech instead of Rogue Tech. That's why I knew that could happen. Um, but yeah. Okay. So you can reload from inside the game. Now I know. Now you know. Now everyone knows. But yeah. I can't stress it enough though. If, the, if a game gives you the option to save and reload a previous save if things are catastrophic, don't ever feel bad about it. Like, the only time you should really feel bad playing games ever is if you're doing something that's ruining somebody else's time. Like cheating in a multiplayer game. Don't do that. That's, that's a complete and total dick move. Just, just remember that your enjoyment doesn't mean that others should suffer. But, like, if you're playing a single-player game of any kind, there's no reason to not use whatever save system is incorporated. Like, I still haven't fully decided how I feel about save states in games that were not designed for save states, but then again, games like retro games, a lot of them were designed way back whenever, uh, Whenever some stuff was still being figured out, so... Yeah, uh... Don't know how I feel about save states, but uh... That's, that's a me problem, not a you problem. If you want to reload, feel free to reload. Don't ever let anyone tell you that, like, you know, it's wrong to use a save system that's built into a game. Ever. And, you know what? If you have fun save stating retro games, do it. Doesn't matter what I think. All, all that matters is that you're having fun. That's what games are there for. So, with that, like, you know, philosophical whatever out of... Uh, yeah. Tomorrow, we are going to, once again, load in. And I'm actually going to delete it. Because sometimes I just don't pay attention and load the first uh, available, uh, first available save to load. But, uh, oh, oh, that's one thing. Um, save the auto saves. Um, auto saves happen when you're launching a mission. There's a pregame auto save. When you complete a mission, specifically, it auto saves once you get back to the Argo. So if the game crashes while you're loading after the salvage screen, you can still lose all the salvage you got and the progress from the mission if it crashes before you get back to the Argo and it autosaves. Um, financial reports autosave. Um, whenever you build a mech or vehicle, usually it autosaves, I believe. Don't quote me on the vehicles and like battle armor stuff, but like whenever you build a mech, it usually autosaves. There have been some times where I've noticed it didn't. Um, also, I don't pay too much attention, <laughs> so it could be more common than I think it is that it doesn't autosave, but it, I think it autosaves the vast majority of the time when you build a mech. Um, and, oh, events, that's the last one. Uh, whenever you're you know passing time and you have an event pop up, whenever the event resolves, I believe, is when it autosaves. Like, I've never tried to quit out before resolving an event, so I don't know if it auto-saves at the start of the event or after, but I'm pretty sure it just saves after the event, so if you reload 
or if you like quit out and reload before the event, then you can potentially prevent it. Because I think, don't quote me on this, because again, I don't really pay too much attention to the auto saves on the save system and stuff. But uh, I believe it's limited to two auto saves. And so, if you have something else happen, like an event pop up after a mission, you'll have the post mission save and then the event save. And if you intended to go back and load the pre mission save, I don't think you'll be able to anymore because I think it's just two auto save slots. And actually, that's a. You know, I don't even know if the autosave slots are per playthrough or if it's just two autosave slots for the game period. And if you're playing multiple campaigns at the same time, that the autosaves get split between different campaigns. I don't know. If you know that, let me know in the comments and I'll pin it uh, just so that people can, you know, quickly see it and reference it. Uh, but yeah, I have no idea. I I don't really mess with saving and loading too much except for at the beginning and end of videos, so... There we go! I learned a lot about the save and reload system, so hopefully, hopefully it was as useful and informative for you. But for now, that's been your episode of Rogue Tech for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.